Good evening. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Mark Hollowell, Director of Public Works. Permit me to confirm that all Board of Public Works members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, Board of Public Works members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Michael S. Thompson, Chairman. John Sorrell, Vice Chairman. It's a little microphone down the bottom. You can touch the screen, it's a touch. The microphone on the bottom, Don? I think Mike was on his way to help him. All right, we'll keep, we'll come back to you. Uh, Anthony Rinaldi, Jr.? Yes. Eric Robbins? Yes. Button not working, Don? Hold on one second, I'll come. Oh, you're locked on. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Don. Oh, <laughs> going great so far. Okay, Don Sarone. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, Plainville, do you want to do your roll call? Very good. Members, when I call your name, please respond on the affirmative. Jeffrey Johnson. Here. Stanley Whiteack. Do we not have Stan? Is Stan still working on it? Jennifer? Yeah, I'm waiting to hear from him. I'm texting him a couple times. Sorry. Okay. We'll get back to him in a moment. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond to me. Uh, Thompson? Present. And Paul Scott. Present. And I see Dennis Morton on the call as well. Should we, for good measure? Dennis, can you respond? There you go. Present. Thank you, sir. All right, that does it for us. Uh, good evening. This is an open meeting of the Board of Public Works and the Plainville Board of Selectmen being conducted remotely with the Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order in which you find the posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as le reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can allow along with the deliberations of the meeting, follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Board of Public Works and the Plainville Board of Selectmen are convening by GoToMeeting as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to sh screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured in the recording. All supporting materials have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I or the chair uh, notes otherwise. Meeting business ground rules. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members, inviting each name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name's called. Further, remember to mute your mic when the computer not on the computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If you wish to engage in dialogue with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has the list of all public commentators, the chair or I will call each name and afford three minutes of any comment. Finally, any votes taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. We're off. Okay, thank you very much everyone for coming. This is a joint meeting between the Board of Public Works and the Board of Selectmen 
regarding the uh, intermunicipal agreement by the two communities. Uh, we're required in the in the agreement to have an annual meeting to update on the progress of the town of Plainville and any projects that uh, might be falling under the capital program. Um, so with that, we'll get started. Uh, Jen, do you want to start or? Sure, uh, I'm going to hand it off to Paul. So I think Paul included um, in your packets, and if not, let me know, Mark, but um, he, there was a memo that he sent to our board that kind of outlined some of the things he's going to go through tonight with you. Um, and if you need a hard copy, let me know. But I'll hand it off to Paul and he can talk to you about what's been going on the last year, which is quite a, quite a lot. Uh, Paul, just come off mute. We put together a report uh, of the efforts that the town of Plainville has undertaken uh, relative to uh, the IMA uh, signed uh, last January. So we're about a year into it. Um, one of the uh, one of the requirements of the intermunicipal agreement uh, was that uh, the town of Plainville uh, make efforts uh, for water conservation uh, in consideration of uh, future development. Uh, is search for a, a, a new source uh, and uh, to uh, replace um, the uh, existing uh, water wells 3, C, and B, and to um, <clears throat> finish the construction of a booster station uh, on uh, Kelly Boulevard with our intermunicipal catch connection with North Attleboro. Um, in, in item A of section six, uh, the town was to consider available water supply and required infrastructure in the review and approval procedures uh, for the for proposed uh, development or upgrades to existing users. Uh, to that, the board, the Plainville board has carefully reviewed uh, development proposals uh, focusing on water demand and water conservation. Mm -hmm. Item B was to enact uh, water use restrictions as required to limit the volume of water here and above set forth during the peak demand seasons. Uh, the, the Planville Board enacted a ban on outdoor watering in May of 2020. Uh, I, do, I did provide a chart in the, in the uh, memo, um, but the uh, Planville's 2020 water consumption decreased by nearly 25 million gallons during the period of May uh, through September. Uh, as compared to the same period in 2019. Um, overall, during that peak period, uh, May through September of 2020, uh, our uh, use was reduced uh, by 17.5%. Certainly, uh, we've, uh, we've done some other work to reduce uh, water loss. Um, we replaced a lot of water mains, uh, specifically uh, the School Street and some areas uh, around School Street uh, that were very old mains and uh, were possibly uh, uh, we were losing water. Uh, item C, uh, engage in a water conservation campaign to educate and inform uh, public water service customers and the general public. Uh, the Plainville Public Works Department had aggressively campaigned to water conservation using the social media platform. And the Plainville Board uh, is confident that this campaign uh, has significantly contributed to Plainville's decreased consumption uh, during the peak period of May through September 2020. Uh, item D, uh, construct an additional water booster station connected to the town of North Attleboro and the town of Plainville uh, Intermunicipal Water Connection at Taunton Street, Kelly Boulevard. Uh, Plainville has nearly completed the construction of Kelly Boulevard booster station, and we anticipate the booster station to be complete and available for service sometime in March of 2021. Uh, item E, uh, research, research additional resources in the Taunton and Blackstone River watersheds. Uh, Plainville has completed an explore, exploration project, and we have identified a potential location for new groundwater supply within the Taunton River watershed. Uh, Plainville hopes to enter the first phase of permitting a new well at this location, uh, following approval of funding at the annual town meeting to be held in June of 2021. Uh, item F, uh, begin uh, regional supply dialogue with other communities, state and local representatives, water districts and water boards. Uh, the Plainville Board has reached out to local representatives and will continue to do so and continue the efforts in a regional, 
to open a regional supply uh, dialogue. Uh, also of note, uh, the uh, replacement of wells 3B and C is nearly complete. Uh, the well pumps have been tested and show very good productivity. Uh, our permit application was submitted on Monday to the DEP uh, for permit to pump, and uh, we hope to see that within 30 days uh, and begin uh, get, and get those uh, wells back into production. <clears throat> That's it. That's all. Thanks, Paul. Can you guys talk a little bit about uh, wells 3B and 3C? I know uh, we've had some conversations about those, about um, one, their uh, uh, production, and two, the PFAS sampling on that, which is something that our town's dealing with. Uh, certainly, I'd, I'd refer to Dennis Morton, our chief operator. Um, <clears throat> so, so production on those wells look to be uh, very good, um, at minimum where we were before the, the two wells went down. Um, I anticipate they're probably going to produce a little bit better than that. Uh, the PFAS testing uh, we did, um, they were below the threshold. One well was at uh, 15 parts per trillion, and the other was at 13 parts per trillion, um, which is which is below. So I, I'm pretty confident, Mark, that with uh, you know us being able to uh, blend with with yours, that that we'll be okay. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to be required to do quarterly testing, and we'll certainly continue with those efforts. Uh, we will be looking to get the rest of our sources done in, in the near future. But those are, like I said, they're below the threshold. Yeah, I'll, I'll take 15 and 13 all day at this point. Um, that's good. As you know, we have the one well, Plainville Well 3, that is um, came in above, I believe it was about 24. Uh, somewhere between 24 and 30 parts per trillion. Uh, but because we blend it with all the other wells, it's, uh, our product coming out of here is well below. And Billy's working on um, SCADA stops to make sure that that well, not that it ever would anyway, but that well's never pumping by itself without uh, the other wells pumping along with it. And that's the well that's right along um, the main road there over by LaRusso's. And that's the only well that we had on that side of town that had that problem. Yes. Uh, Dennis, what was the production of that? Was that about 300 gallons a minute? We we tested one and they were running at 300 gallons a minute, uh, 12 feet of drawdown, and that's 54 feet deep. Um, the other well, I, I haven't seen the numbers on the other well yet, but I, I think they're pretty good. I, I bet they're at least 200. Yep. So you're thinking you combine, we can get around 500 gallons a minute, four to yeah, five? 500, I would say, uh, pretty comfortably. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that'd be pretty good production to uh, put into the system if we can do it 500 gallons a minute. Okay. Um, just as a point of clarification, sorry, this is Brian Kelly, Plainville. If, uh, Dennis, do you know what the production was prior to them going down? You'd mentioned that new, new production's higher, but can you just give us a sense? Well, prior to them going down, we were pumping about 317 gallons a minute. Um, <clears throat> I think we were down around the nine or 10 foot um of draw of drawdown left uh, those walls weren't quite as deep as these so um you know these seem to be a little bit better than the other two wells for sure okay right, thank you yeah that right there i mean if you had those wells running uh daily if you run them on 12-hour schedules daily throughout the year you could easily exceed your permit if you were getting 500 gallons a minute out of that um, so that's good news. Not that you want to run out of your permit, but uh, that it it may have that capacity uh, right. within it. Um, does the board have any comments? Board of Public Works. Don. Yeah. What was last year? How much water they used up from us? Uh, uh, last year they they were right at about the uh, 110 million gallons uh, of uh, what we had uh, within our agreement. Uh, do you recall, Paul? No, no new growth, right? That was last year, and that was um, that was where they were at the end of last year. Yes, um, and they, their wells were down for a period of time, so they, they under the they were working under the emergency portion of that contract, utilizing some of our water from 
uh, plane mill. They were getting about 150 gallons a minute at that point. But yes, they they were right up against the uh, the the limit last year. Originally, they came in to uh, for what 140 million gallons when we started this agreement. I'd have to double check, but I, I believe the uh, initial discussion was 140 to 145, and that included um, Heather Hill and a uh, percentage of growth annually. I, and I can't recall offhand. I probably should have pulled the file before the meeting, but right. uh, what the what that growth was, but did have some factor of annual growth in that um, over, I think, the next five year period. But this guy, this agreement is only for four years, and then we're going to go back to the original gallons. Right, there's four years left on this agreement. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I know that I made a notice to them when we're doing this, went through all this process. And four years from now, we're not giving them any more water. We're giving them what we had their original agreement. Just so a they point got to find a source. Just a point of clarity, Mark. We're not we're not being given any, right? We're we're buying all this from you guys. Right. Yeah, well, there there is a, a percentage of which um uh 83.95 million with 10% 10 percent overage that we're processing your water um we're processing your water through our plant and giving it back to you with the operating costs of the plant uh because plainville uh assisted in the payment of building of our plant That's so right. there's a certain capacity allotted to plainville um as part of the plant and okay. that that was in the original agreement uh back in i forget when it was uh 2000 or whatever uh okay. that when the plant was built plainville would have a, an allotted capacity of that and they would pay a certain percentage of the construction and upkeep of that building the overage between the 83.95 and the 10 percent overage that's what you're purchasing from us at rate uh gotcha. up to 110 million gallons and change so yes you are purchasing it from us uh, but it's from our water supply, uh, the town North Adamar's water supply, not Plainville's water being sold back to them. That's why one of the things that's encouraging is if your wells produce better, you yeah. can have more of your water going through here. Right. And then just a point of clarity, um, you were talking about the original agreement being 140 to 145 million uh, gallons. Um, and you said last year we were at 110. No. Yeah. So I think let's speak, different things. Yeah, we're we're talking Animation. about so um, the agreement that we have in place is for just north of 110 million gallons. Uh, it just the math worked out to go over a little bit, um, and that is what the agreement is between the the two communities. When we first had a, started having the discussion a couple of years ago, the projected growth of Plainville, where you were uh was anticipated to be 140 to 145 million gallons and that's that was a lot of ifs if you have certain amount of growth if you have had the hill come fully online um there was a just a, a number of things that were included in that determination when we were discussing what north attleboro was able to provide uh comfortably you know we we have a certain number and right now you know I'm short a million gallons a day because one of my wells is off until I do a four million dollar project on that. So that gives our town a little bit more agita on, you know, uh, going beyond that 110 million gallons. Absolutely. And then, uh, of course, in, in, in of course, we're a month away from this, but we're a month away from basically cutting that problem in half. Is that right? With getting these other wells online, it, it'll cut our immediate problem in half but i mean our overall problem right. is i produce about a billion gallons a year i use about 900 million that gives me about 100 million gallons you know i want that float for our next 20 years you know and you guys took um 15 or so of that you know ballpark 15 million gallons out of the 100 million gallons float that that we have so uh, essentially now we're down to 85 percent of our float um okay. so that's that's where the rationale comes from. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse me, Mark. Can I have a question? Yeah, um, that, yeah Mr. Wydak, how are you doing, sir? Good. How are you, Mark? Um, but I just want to make sure because this is being recorded that everyone knows who's talking. 
Okay. Um, what do you call it? On that $4 million that you need to get your other well up, is that going to make an increase in our water that we're buying from you, or do we have to pay any of that money? Well, um, the the uh, increase, you know, as our rates increase, the amount that, that you will pay will increase uh, along with it. it, it your uh, set to our rates for that overage for the first 83.95 million gallons plus 10% overage. Um, I should really just do the calculation. Um, for that, that just falls under whatever our operating costs are. We have a very elaborate spreadsheet that we fill out throughout the year. We track all of our expenses at Whiting Street separately in our Munis accounting system. And at the end of the year, we do a tally. Um, we include that, a percentage of any projects that we're doing. And then we uh, send a bill to the town of Plainville for that. And then at the bottom of it is the overage. So the top half of it, most of what you're paying during the year, the, the 94 million gallons, we'll say 93, 94 million gallons, is within that operating budget. And that's about a dollar to a dollar ten per thousand gallons. Ballparking it's about a dollar to a dollar ten. On the other side, the the overage, you're paying our rate, which is uh paul do you remember what it is i i do cubic feet so it's it's like five bucks per thousand gallons five five twenty five something like that. five five thirty one mark five thirty one from ballpark uh so you're paying five thirty one per thousand gallons for that so you know uh which is why as i've said it's in everyone's best interest for your wells to that are over here that go through our plant to produce as much as possible it takes off of us you know we sell it to you at a cheap rate you're only paying what what it costs to make it uh and get it back to you that's why we're encouraged by the numbers we're getting out of uh, B and C, I think it is. Um, can the public ask a question? Uh, if if no other board members or selectmen members, um, is any other board of selectmen member, can we entertain a question? Uh, okay, what's your name, sir? Uh, this is uh, Ted Jansen, 23 Colonial Way in Flame. Jansen. Okay. Um, so the two uh, the two new replacement wells, um, Dennis talked in gallons per minute, 500 gallons per minute. What does that come out in the daily total? Will you be would you be able to treat that at a peak mark? That much? Well, what we would do is we would blend it with our other wells. Most of our wells, you know, we we try to do you know 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So you're talking about 12 hours a day. So if theoretically you had 500 gallons a minute, you did 12 hours a day, every day of the year, that's 131 million gallons. Um, it's ballparking it. Um, you know, that that's a good producing well over the year. Well is always gonna be down for, you know, uh, in the summertime, we, we try to move them around a little bit more just because we're stressing them out sometimes. And sometimes we have them off for a few days. You know, you need to let your wells rest. Yeah. You need to take care of them. So. When we look at a well, we typically look at it on 12 hour days, not quite 365, but 300 days a year. Um, 12 so, hour, 12 hour cycle time per day, right? That that's just how we estimate it. Do, do we break that rule sometimes? Absolutely. You know, and I'm not. I guess so. So where I'm, where, so where I'm going with it is, my concern is, if we were to have a problem with our um, <clears throat> You know the two other wells in town by um Trump Pike Lake, and we had to get that 500 GPM, and that's uh five, ten, that's um 700,000 gallons, right? I mean, I know you're pumping other ones too in that same pipe to your treatment. How much can you push back to us if we were if we turned those on and we were doing 500 GPM and we just had to do it and we had to do it for a few days in a row, and it's 700,000 gallons a day. Can you treat that and give that back to us if we have a problem with our other wells? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that everyone's gonna understand, it's not like, you know, I'm putting a little sticker on each drop of water that's coming through from your wells going into mine and then going back out. We're taking a daily total into the system. You know, our other wells produce more or less as needed. Uh, you have one booster pump. Right now, answer your question, the most I can give you, I think is, Dennis, correct me if I'm wrong, about 400,000 gallons a day. Is about our limit on the booster ballpark. That's correct. 
so we're so, they're in the process of doing a second booster, which I've strongly encouraged and uh, think is a good idea just for the point of redundancy. But that booster is going to be, I think, six hundred thousand gallons. Correct. So that it's an additional six hundred. Yes. Yeah. So then, so, it's an so that would total. So it will be able to do two things. One, it'll be able to put pressure on your system on another side of town, uh, and in many cases, it allow for the other booster to be completely shut off if it needs maintenance or repairs or anything like that. Well, um, that's good. In a pinch, yep. you could use the two of them combined. The the contracts, uh, the intermissible agreement has a maximum of, I, I think, 600,000 gallons a day is our maximum, except in an emergency, um, which has to be declared to uh, my board. Um, so in emergency, and as I've said before, you know, I'm sure as neighboring communities, we will always do whatever we can. Uh, sure. If it was a prolonged uh, issue during the summer, you know, it gets to the point where there's only so much that can be done. You know, um, yep. we're limited. And I, and I, and I, we can produce six million so, gallons a day. We use five. You know, I don't like to get up to the six. I've gotten up to no. five. We've gotten up to six million once. We had to send out an emergency to everyone. Since then, we haven't been above five, four, but that only leaves 600,000 left. Um, so, and and I mean, we're eternally grateful to you guys. It's, I'm just, my thing is if what, you know, I'm just trying to say, think of, the, of a, I hate to say a worst case scenario, but if something were to happen with it, it sounds like you could get us with those two well, two replacement wells doing that 500 GPM. You probably could get us above 600,000 a day if we had to in a pinch. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. And, and again, it's, it's all dependent upon what's going on. If it happened tomorrow, yeah, it's, you know, I could do it tomorrow summer without uh, any yeah. of your wells working. Uh, if it's during the summer, that's more of a concern. If it's during the summer and there's a fire, then we have a lot of concern. Um, yeah, you know. and so I, I'm kind of thinking, you know, we have a an issue at the at the Turnpike Lake, and we have to go down for an hour or two a day. Sounds like we'd be okay. And then I guess I have a question for our DPW, Paul or Dennis. What's the max we use in, in the summer? Is it a million? million gallons a day with with restrictions is that kind of a good good round peak day paul or dennis uh well first first of all i just want to uh, paul scott plainville public works i just want to clarify something that uh, the wells that we're talking about 3b and 3c are replacement wells they're replacing water that we've been uh, pumping from those wells and serving the town with all along for the past 20 years so these aren't new wells these aren't new sources this is an extra water uh, this is water we use every day and have been. Um, the, 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 those wells are not, uh, um, we're not installed uh, for to supplement uh, demand or uh, as an emergency uh, um, source. These, these are the wells that we depend on. One third of Plainville's water um, is taken from the Plainville wells and treated in North Attleboro and then delivered back to Plainville. So this isn't, this isn't new water. It, 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 it's not, um, solving the problems of, of our current and future demands. Um, our, our plant, uh, the treatment plant, uh, has produced over 800,000 gallons in a day. Um, however, uh, the treatment plant's capacity, the optimal capacity of the treatment plant, that is to run the treatment plant without killing it, is 500,000 gallons a day. So when you, when you add the 500,000 and 400,000 from North Attleboro, you're looking at about 900,000 or a million gallons a day. Uh, that's pretty close to our demand. I think, I think in, uh, in FY19, uh, we, were, we were in the 310 or 316 uh, million gallons total use. Um, uh, we have uh, since reduced that with, with uh, the water ban and repairs that have been made to the system. Uh, but these, uh, the, the booster station at Kelly Boulevard is just as Mark uh, described it. It's a redundancy to uh, Everett Street pump station. If uh, something happened to Everett Street, we, we, we could be delivered the same amount of water through uh, the booster station at Kelly Boulevard. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Everett Street is, is, is aging. Uh, that pump station is aging. At some point in time, we're going to need to take it offline to re rehabilitate it. And having the Kelly Boulevard booster station will certainly, uh, will certainly help us with that. Paul, if I got just to add to that quickly, it, but you make a good point when if that other one is offline, then we can only give you 600. 
if Kelly's offline, we can only give you 400. So you're limited, you know, uh, by other constraints than that. And you, you bring up a good point that, that, you know, when I'm talking about I'm excited because their wells are doing so well, it's because it's an incremental, it could be an incremental increase on what they were all, what Plainville already provided. And if you can produce more water for us, we can process and sell it back to you at that rate. So I, I appreciate the clarification that we're not getting five, 500 gallons a minute of new water. It's the water that was already here. And Paul, this is, um, this is Ted. Thanks for clarifying that. Cause the way I said it may lead the people to believe that that's a new water source. And I know it's not, I know the replacement wells and I know we've been getting that water there forever. Um, what I'm pushing at is I'm just, I, I'm concerned if we ever lose Turnpike Lake, because my biggest concern is that we don't have much redundancy in our system. I don't know if people realize that. And you were just, and Paul, you've been running that plant and just going and going. If something were to happen to our water at Turnpike Lake, um, where's our redundancy? You know, we're dropping, right? And Mark, how much redundancy would you say you have in your system? If you know, give an idea over there to, versus us. What would you, what's your opinion, Mark? Well, I, you know, redundancy comes in different fashions. You know, I, I don't have, you know, my peak summer is 5.5 million gallons a day. I don't have, you know, I really have about 6 million gallons a day uh, from our water. Um, so our redundancies are if our wells go down. If I have a well go down, Kelly Well, Adamsdale, Cushman, or some of the Plainville wells, I have them in in areas very far apart, and I have four sources of uh, that enter the system. I, I have the one here at Whiting Street. We have Kelly, and then we have two separate sources at Adamsdale and Cushman. Adamsdale right now is down because it got a 21 on PFAS. Talk about losing by a little. Um, so, so we have, I'd say we have redundancy because we have different sources, but I don't have. Two million gallon, you know. I don't have five million gallons extra sitting around to uh, utilize. You know. Yeah, you don't have like what most you would call. Communities are relatively close to what they have, which is why communities are are always looking for new sources of water, because it takes years to get and years to get approved, and then once you have it, it sort of infills on its own. Um. We have um so so our um highway our um Trumpike Lake well wells and the waste treatment plant aren't necessarily a single point of failure because you can give us a lot of water if that were to fail um um but there's not a lot of spare in our system I, I suppose like um not maybe as much as you have if we have a well go down I mean you back us up which is good um. I'm just trying to think of a worst case scenario and I know we need more water sources. And personally I'd like to see another water treatment plant somewhere, but that's uh that brings up the dollars. I appreciate everyone answering my questions. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Paul, I know you guys are looking at that you had mentioned um uh researching uh new water sources as part of this plan that you have moving forward. Uh, yes, Paul Scott, Plain with Public Works. Uh, yes, Mark, we have identified, we did an exploration project, uh, it took about a year. Uh, we did identify uh, a, a well point, a well source that uh, we feel very confident um, uh, can, can produce uh, uh, the four to 500 uh, gallon per minute range. Um, and we are working uh, to uh, to fund uh, the design and permitting uh, for uh for, for that well and uh you know that takes time it's it, you know it's, we're looking at we're looking at five years um to to permit that well um and at the same time we're also talking about a treatment plant and expanding the treatment plant or a new plant um you know our our, our PSAF uh, results are gonna um are gonna be uh more known uh sometime in october uh with the well as the turnpike um and i i we hope to uh begin uh, the design process um, of a, uh, of a, of an expansion or replacement treatment plant. But I think that's just where we start is, is, um, what is the, what's the longevity? What's the, what are the economic factors of, um, expanding our current plant versus uh, building a new plant? And, uh, if we do have issues with, with PFAS, uh, maybe we don't have any right away, but we may, in, we may in the future, 
as everyone um, must understand that the PFAS don't break down, they build up, so things can change, and we'll monitor the. What? If we if we dis, if we uh, see those PFAS uh, results come in where um, we feel that uh, uh, it, it it would be appropriate to uh, add uh, treatment uh, for the PFAS, uh, and then perhaps it, it it goes the way of a new plant uh, because of the just because of the cost of a of of, of the of, of a GAC uh, filtration system is 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 huge. So uh, you know we've we've got to we've got to get that ironed out. Um, and, and hopefully we'll 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 have some uh, answers uh, by the time we get together again in a year. Yeah, and uh, you said it could take up to five years. Um, that's sort of a DEP fast tracking in order to get it there. I mean, I, yeah. I've been through ones that take you know ten years to get through the whole process. So, and I know DEP is you know hopefully trying to help you. <laughs> and I and we hope so too. And we've worked very hard on a relationship with the DEP. Um, and, and I think that, you know, they have a good understanding, uh, both Boston and the regional have a good understanding of where Plan Bill's at um, with, our, with our demand versus, um, you know, what we're able to produce. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we've done everything uh, that we can uh, with conservation and, uh, um, you know, re re repairing uh, the system, upgrading the pipelines, um, the, 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 the water bands, um, you know, we're, you know, keeping our uh, unaccounted for down below 10%, uh, keeping our, uh, our our daily use below the 65. So we've we've met all the conditions that um, that we need to meet um, uh, for for them to be understanding of our uh, and 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 hopefully helpful, uh, very helpful in the very near future and, and fast tracking this well. Yeah, and like I said, I know if you can get a little bit more out of your well, you're going to be bumping the ceiling on um the DEP permit on this side on the 10 mile side um so hopefully they'll be understanding I mean at some point we just don't have a lot of choices it's the same thing with the PFAS I I've been doing a lot of meetings uh and there was a seminar that they had and I asked the question what are you going to do to a small community that hits 20 on PFAS they can't shut down you know all you're going to have to do is notify the people and do an ACO and then everyone's got a four million dollar marching order uh it's you know it's interesting the level that they got the PFAS. You know, 20 is a little tough. You know, if it was 35, you know, the three of the towns surrounding you wouldn't be uh, doing anything right now. Um, you know, it's just it's a tough number. Um, going back to a um, one of the items that you guys were working on, uh, proposed new development. I know you guys have a lot going on in town, uh, which is great. Uh, I'm just wondering how that is factoring into your future development as far as uh, water use goes. Well, we're certainly up against the wall, uh, you know, and, and we need growth and uh, we want to promote growth, uh, the right growth in the right place. And, and you know, I, I think we, we have we have had some development uh, proposals that are uh, um, you know, we, minimal use. They're not. Uh, you know, we 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 do have a uh, uh, some proposals on the on the uh, on the floor right now that are that are that are being talked about around town. Um, and we we had uh, we had uh, talked about a um, a warehouse that uh, all of a sudden turned into a, a Thermo Fisher uh, <laughs> a scientific uh, research uh, facility, which is huge. Uh, and I think that we, you know, we're 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 in a place where we'll we will need to continue uh, conservation efforts um, and uh, pipe replacements, um, uh, leak detection, uh, all of those things that reduce use, uh, so that we can uh, continue to move forward with development. I think it is it, going to be every development is going to be uh, have to be uh, seriously considered for um, for for Planville's future, and you know the, the the, the amount of demand that 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 development will place on Plainville, um, and I like I said, we're up against the wall. We know it, um, and uh, we're doing everything we can. And I think the selectmen are very, uh, you know, they're very well aware of the of the problems that we have, and and uh, are, are looking to do the best they can to uh, find some balance. <laughs> you know, there's going to be a, there's going to be a balance. Yeah. Did you guys do a leak detection this year? Yes. How'd it turn out? Very well. 
uh, we found some we found some pretty good leaks um, and, and repaired them. Um, and we have, I mean, you know, we have leaks in, in the in the older pipelines that are um, that are small leaks. Um, but over time, those small leaks add up. Um, we've also had some very very strange uh, uh, service uh, leaks um, in one section of town, Landau Road, um, where uh, the copper uh, services are just uh, they're being corroded. Uh, but what but but what looks to us uh, to be uh, some electrical current and uh, you know we've th there's been a dozen of those replaced and and you know those was those were significant leaks and they've been then they've been repaired so that reduces your 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 demand yeah we actually uh, are finishing up a project um, in the Arnold Road neighborhood and we found three or four that you know the the pipe was actually acting as cathodic protection uh, for the you know they were grounding it into the water system and it was just pitting the pipe all the way down the service line uh, it was amazing to see uh, but and you know that's our speculation because every one of them were ground into their water pipe and when we went and cut one of them my uh, employee acted as the arc uh, between the two momentarily so we got shocked um, but we've seen that too that you know just I don't know if it's the combination of using that as grounding and the type of soils around it uh, cause it to corrode. It, interesting, but uh, I know that can be a problem. Now, you guys require the homeowners to repair that? No, the uh, the leaks were on the uh, on the service side of the, of oh, the, uh, the side of the curb. Yeah, most of the ones we found were on the homeowner side. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? This is um Ted Jansen again, if if I if I may. Certainly. Um Ted Jansen, 23 Colonial White Plainville. We um we have a well field Lake Miramichi. Paul Scott and Dennis and Mark, your opinion if we put a treatment plant there. I know it's not the um I know it doesn't yield like our other two well fields does do, but that gives us a little extra doesn't it? I mean, is is that hard to treat the, the manganese there? Is that just chasing the, the wrong dollars there? Could you get an opinion on that? Opening that, you know, treating that well field completely? Thank you. Uh, Paul Scott, Public Works in Plainville. Uh, so uh, we did look at that, um, adding a plant to the Miramichi well site, but the Miramichi well site isn't that great a producer and um, it, it has restrictions uh, on uh, lake levels. So um, your return on investment is just not there um, to spend to spend uh, millions and millions of dollars on a treatment plant there and then uh, see it shut down in the summertime due to due to uh, uh, lake levels and droughts. It's just it's it's just not good. Um, so that's it's a very that's a very expensive approach and and, and probably not um, a good economic approach. Uh, we'd also talked about um, that at some point in time to trans to put a transmission main in. From the Miramichi well site uh, to the Turnpike Lake uh, treatment plant, um, and that might may still happen someday. Uh, but even that is a uh, is a huge project and, uh, and and very very expensive. So I think that the the best thing for us to do is concentrate on the Turnpike Lake well field and the Turnpike Lake treatment plant. Paul, oh, what was that? Um, was that three hundred thousand gallons a day, or even less than that? You remember what? Yeah, three hundred thousand gallons a day on a good day. On a good day, and the good day, yeah, the day you need very it. Very shallow wells. Very shallow wells, Mark. Yeah, and the day you need it, it, you know, in the summer. I know when you have the lake level restrictions, you know, the summertime when you need it, the lakes are low. You're not going to be able to get at it. Yeah, it's and, not there. We can't. Right. We can't pump it. And we did our treatment plant uh, 20 years ago. This is its birthday. Um, and uh, that was $7.5 million for our treatment plant. I know there's an economy of scale, but bottom end, you're probably talking three or $4 million by, by the time you get done. That's what, that's what we're, our consultants were saying in that, in that range. Yeah. So but it's going to be a green sand. It's going to be a green sand filter. I mean, you, you, the manganese and iron in that, in that water is incredible. And if you had PFAS over there, it's another $4 million. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean that would be, you know, it's an inactive well now, right? Yeah, that's correct. They're offline. They're exercised weekly. 
uh, but they're offline and, and they're just exercise to waste just to keep right. all the equipment uh, uh, wet and working. Right. So, it, you know, I, I'd call that deep backup. You know, I, I've got Plainville one. We haven't touched it in, you know, 25 years, but it's there. If, you know, every other shoe dropped, you know, I could go put a million into rehab in that well and redoing it. And, and it comes through this plant. It's just sometimes it's just not worth the uh, effort unless, you know, everything else goes to pot. And even we were looking at, um, I have another well over my Kelly well field, but, you know, it would cost me, you know, several hundred thousand dollars, almost a million dollars to rehab that well to send it over to Kelly. And it might have PFAS too. Um, you know, so you, you look at your options and you're like, eh, you know, <laughs> none of them are very good sometimes. Right. But you keep right. it in your back pocket in case there's, you know, you never let a well go fully offline. Um, so that's what I would say. That would be, a, for me, answering your question, um, Mr. Jensen, that it would probably be something that you'd look at it as uh, not cost beneficial at this time, but it might be something in the future that you're forced into if something else goes wrong. Or if the cost of treatment goes way down. I think Mark, you said it sounds like all our you supported it. All our focus should be on our um, Turnpike Lake well, wells and the um, water treatment plant there. Um, Paul, if we double the size of that, would the, would we be allowed to Paul double the size of that? I mean, it's a lot of money, right? But then you could accept the Miramichi order. You have to pipe to it. I mean, is that is that way? way is that a crazy idea? A brand new one that's twice the size, and we add Miramichi well field to it. Uh, Paul Scott, playing with Public Works. Uh, Ted, if we, uh, if we, if and when we design uh, the expansion or uh, of, of the existing treatment plant or a new plant, um, we will design it to include any capacity that we might get from Miramichi, so that in the future we could uh, install a transmission main and pipe it to Turnpike Lake. Gotcha. So that's that's top priority is to be able to accept it, whether you pipe it in the in the whether you pipe it right away, but when you do redo that plant, whether it's a new one or you refab it, you're going to include that capacity. I mean, it sounds that's like correct. that's almost correct. a no-brainer. Yeah, we're forced to do that. Plus a new well down there, I suppose. Thanks for everybody's time. Uh, questions. Excuse me, Ted. Uh, maybe he's already left, but Paul, I think that. Uh, Ted's way off base on that because to try to put a transmission line into that Miramichi well would be useless. And the fact is that that's Attleboro and you can only have so much draw down there. I don't, even if you had a plant that could treat that, I don't think that it would be cost effective. It would be a hundred year payback to get the little bit of water that comes out of Miramichi well to try to put it into a new treatment plant. And I wish Ted was listening to that because no, I hear no, I, I hear you. I heard you. I heard okay. you. Yep. I mean, that's, that's high guy, Ted. That's uh, the transmission line was uh, was long lost when we tapped off all those houses on it, and then at that point, if it was a transmission line, they should have ran another line down there. No, I know. It's, I mean, I'm, I live by those wells, right? So, I, and I had the water. I had that brown water, so I know. I just. We're so short on water that we're, we're not that short on water, but if we're going to expand our water capacity, I think we're living on the margins and it's going to be expensive. But um, I understand, Mr. Wydak, that's uh, especially if you can't use it in the summer. So right. thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any comment? Tony? Your mic's on. That's why I called him. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, no questions. Okay, uh, Mike, you have any comments? No, I'm good. I'm glad to see that um, that you've got some wells that you're going to help you out a little bit more. So, thumbs up. Yeah. So, just quickly, I had it on here. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, I know what I did with it. Um, just looking at our capital right now, we have um, two green sand filter media replacements that we're doing. So those are $125,000 or so each. I think actually one of them came in at like 85,000. So that's great. Um, so those going on this year, we don't have any plans for next year there. Uh, and I'll send this over to you, Paul. I've just been busy. Um, 
Next year, we're looking at, uh, so FY22, we don't have any plans for the whiting treatment plant. Uh, FY23, we're looking at replacing the roof, which will be 22 years old then. Um, it's in, still in okay shape. Uh, it's had a little bit of problems that we've had fixed under our budget, uh, but we just put it in there as a placeholder. And then uh, in FY24, that um, stripping tower media will have to be replaced, the buckyballs in, in that media. Uh, and that's that's only about a $40,000 uh, install on that one. Um, so those are the projects we have coming up over the next couple of years uh, at that facility. And Paul, I'll send this over to you. Um, so as part of this, we you guys used to pay like a flat $25,000 capital um, that was supposed to go to all the work that we did at the plant. Uh, and when we renegotiated this, we thought, you know, we have a pretty savvy enough now that we can all come up with exact numbers a year in advance of what the anticipation is. And if it's something that you you guys have to go and borrow for, there's things in there. If it's big enough or expensive enough, we all get together and discuss it before we go. We don't have anything uh, right now on the horizon. If PFAS was uh, something that we were concerned about, thankfully we're not, that would be something that we would have to include uh, in that. Uh, we'd have to include that number in there uh, as a future project. Um, but that's all I have. And like I said, I will send you over the capital, Paul. Thank you, Mark. And Mark, what you're saying is that the water rates are going to be going up again. Uh, yes, we will, in all likelihood, it won't be going up a lot um, because we're kind of getting lucky. As I said, it's the 20th birthday uh, of our plant, which means our debt service falls off this year. So lucky me, my debt service falls off for one thing and I get to pick it up for another thing. So it's not exactly a wash, but it'll certainly take the curse off of um uh, the rates we would have to raise for a PFAS uh activated carbon system for Adamsdale. Thank you, Mark. I expect it to be nominal. A couple of three percent is is what we were looking at based on that project and the other one falling off the plate. But we're not there yet. Okay, any other questions? All right, um, my board, I actually have two items that I sent to you today that they're small things. Uh, if you guys don't have anything else, I don't know if you have some special thing you do when you leave a meeting, uh, you can do it. Mark, uh, Jeff Johnson from Plainville. Uh, just one quick question because I, I've i forgotten where it is, but where exactly is the Plainville three well? Plainville Three, uh, my Plainville. That's right over on Your Plainville Three. Yeah. What's that street? I want to say Fuller Street. Is it Fuller Street? Is that on uh, Fuller Street? Yeah, it's it's right, right. pony okay. up against Fuller Street, and there's like a eerily blue pond on the other side of it. Yeah. If you're looking from an yeah. aerial map, um, wonder where that PFAS came from. Uh, yeah. On the other side of that, so it's it's right ponied up against the street there, okay. and all my other ones are sort of spread out a little bit further. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay. There's nothing Just else. Our, during our, our portion in the. Say that again, Brian? Did, just, did Mark want us to adjourn our section? Yes. Yeah, if you want, you can stay on for our meeting. They're very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stan, if you want to make a motion. No, I make a motion that the uh, Board of Selectmen Water Sewer Commissioners adjourn the meeting with North Attleboro at 7.31. I'm trying to decide if I want supper or more meeting. Uh, Mr. Johnson seconds the motion. With a motion and a second. All those in favor, Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wydak? Aye. Mr. Kelly's aye as well. Thank you all very much for all of your support and being such great neighbors. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's tough trying to walk and chew gum at the same time here, but um, hopefully our report should be making a lot of progress. So thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, Mark, and thank you, board for all your assistance and I think this I'm hopeful that we keep this going and we get our our new well someday uh, we can all be even better partners to each other great looking forward to thank it you. thank you thank you, you. Good night. okay hold on splitting screen I want that one you guys I know Eric left did Eric leave? 
Oh, we still got four of us. No, it works yeah, and maybe send out with them. I don't know. People could stay. So the only other two things, and uh, I sent it over to their minor things, but um, uh, we had a new snowplow contractor. Um, oddly, he waits till February to uh, jump on, but he wanted to get in for the uh, snowstorm. He did get all his paperwork in with us, so we put him on for the storm, which is less than five thousand dollars, so we can just hire him. But in case there's more snow, um, is out there. It's uh, Stephen Canada. He's got a Cat 906 loader with a 10 foot plow. Uh, actually, he's plowed for Norwood in the state in the past. He um, he did an excellent job uh, plowing, so highly recommend him now. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion. The board vote to recommend approval of contracts with the following <laughs> company with Stephen Canada for the 2021 snow and ice as recommended by the highway division. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Uh, Tony? Yes. John? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay, All right, Mike, now for the next. Your mic is terrible, Mike. It's not your mic. <laughs> it's mic actually terrible. terrible. Yeah, it's so, up there. Yeah. I can cut it. Yeah, this is. um. Fugro, they actually did our flyover and ortho photo. Um, so they were supposed to have this all done by October, which they actually did. But um, our, we had a consultant and our the GIS people from um, North Attleboro Electric, who we were partnered with on this project. Um, they had a lot of questions and a lot of concerns about some of the imagery that they came back with. So they all went back to the drawing board, went through it again. And it took a couple of months, but we ended up getting a good product out of it on our end, so I'm glad they stuck with it. Um, the contractor was good to work with. There's just um, some of the imagery was kind of at an angle. You can almost look through people's windows if you wanted to. Um, so we, there was just a lot of work to get that to set up. Yeah. And then sometimes the screens didn't, you know, the different areas, the layers didn't match up very well. So there was some colorization work that we had to do. Um, took a long time, but I, I think the end product was really good. And we actually sat down with them afterwards to talk about if we ever did another flyover, what should we put in the contract in order to make it clearer to them what our expectations were. Um, so anyway, it worked out fine, but it took another two months. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, I'm on my phone a little different today. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I'll make a motion. The board approve change order number one for Fergo Incorporated for the GIS ortho photo upgrade project to amend the final contract date, February 1st, 2021. I'll second. Motion's made and seconded. <clears throat> we'll do a roll call vote. Eric? Yes. Tony? Yes. John? Yes. Myself? Yes. Unanimous, Mark. Thank you. So how do you guys, uh, I think that went. I think that went well. And I got to say, they are doing a fair amount of work. Um, you know, when we talk about the wells that they had that were down, um, having them back up at 300 is great. If we can get another 100 or 150, um, I'm not sure. They're close to each other. So when they say one gets 300, one gets 200, there's a um, process in well development called mirroring. So when you're both going down, you have your drawdown. They overlap. They cause them to draw down a little bit more. So Typically, you take you know a little bit off of the both each of those wells when you're running them at the same time. So I might not be 500, but it might be 450 or 400. I'll take it. If one of those are running 300, that's going to be great. You know, we can run one at a time and get get 300 out of that. So that's encouraging for us. I was a little disappointed. The guy, the gentleman on the phone call earlier, had called me a few days ago, and he w was telling me that you know he thinks that Plainville needs more more sources. He was talking to me about Mirror Machine. I, I had said, you know, it sounds like it's not worth it at this time, but you hold on to a well because you never know. You know, someday you might not have a choice and anything's economically feasible. Um, but he went on to say, you know, he really thinks the town needs more sources. And I said, well, they're working on one. They're trying to get one. They went to town meeting to get it. And he's like, yeah, I was against it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can never tell about people. Uh, but it was a good conversation that I had with him. I talked to him for about a half hour the other day. 
uh, it's always interesting when you talk to people about other water systems. Uh, <laughs> he kept asking me, he's like, what do you think we should do? I'm like, it, I don't know. It's not my system. So, <laughs> but I, I do think they're making I some progress. On that. My concern is if they don't get progress on that with the development set of possibly going in, um, this Fisher Scientific, there's a, another warehouse that's possibly going in down the road. I don't know how much the warehouse they put in. The office park that's going in across of, uh, uh, off of Cal down the road from Kelly Boulevard on uh, 152 there. 152, yeah. And um, obviously, when you talk about uh, the numbers that you would have from the Heather Hill development, that's really where you know you start to have concern that I'd be worried moving forward. You know, if you don't get that well in five years, if you don't, you know, because you're you're doing five year planning. And you know, you hope that well gets there. Um, but in getting it approved by the DEP, it's just an expensive hole in the ground. So you never know. I mean, we did we spent 80 grand on a well out in Plainville, um, and we got nothing. We got like uh, 100 gallons a minute out of it. We had to abandon it and start over. You know, this is 13 years ago, but um, we actually fired the con the uh, engineer who was working on it. We asked him how he determined where he put the well, and he said. It's where the machine backed up too nice. <laughs> oh. Jeez. Yeah, we got rid of that. Uh, any, what do you guys think? I think you're gonna come back and ask for more once they get all these projects approved. Yeah, and I don't see how they're not gonna. I'm not giving them any more water because I gotta keep it for North Attleboro residents. Well, I mean that you know, we came up with a 110 kind of begrudgingly you know we, we that was that was what plainville needed um you know and it, you know it, it gave billy agita given anything away billy never wants to give anything away um you know but it, it was a reasonable amount and the you know the town's making money off of it which is good you know and maybe five years from now you know we find another source john brady um you know of water that we can utilize maybe we are in a better situation uh He's got a leak on his line, by the way, John Brady. And my guys went out there to talk to him about how he's got to fix it after the after he didn't want to going out there before the snowstorm. Uh, but they're like, why don't you just get rid of this thing? And he's like, the town doesn't think it's worth anything. It's worth a fortune. <laughs> so I guess I haven't uh, got up that hill yet. So you guys have anything else for me? Snowstorm went fine. Uh, no real issues, no breakdowns. We had, I think I lost a bolt on a plow. That was it. Um, for a heavy, wet snow like that, I really thought we were going to be in trouble. Uh, we did lose 11 mailboxes. Uh, five of them were from one guy, four from another guy. So they'll be talked to. Um, so we weren't in your area. Actually, five of them were in Westwood Estate. So can't wait for the most call. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they did a good job. Yeah, they did. It was a tough storm because we just never knew where it was going. Um, you know, it just kept lingering out there. They kept saying, oh, there's five to ten more to go. So we kept everybody out. You know, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. More is coming. And it, it never really did. So despite the lack of snow, it was just as expensive as it is. So I got 10 inches. You know. Anything else? No. Nope. Anybody have anything else? No, that's it. No, that's it for me. No, no I'm good. Okay. Eric, are you going to put papers? Oh yeah, Eric. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna do it tomorrow actually. Okay. All right. Sorry, I meant to talk to talk to you about it. I forgot. Yes, sir. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Um, I, I guess I got to make an appointment. Is that true? Is that is that still? Uh, if, you just, if you just call them, and you tell them you're outside, they they'll let you in. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna call when you get over there. Okay, <laughs> the number's at the back door. That's what I did. I said, I'll just be knocking on uh, Borg's window. Yeah. Yeah. Don't like that. <laughs> no, Pat, no. Bring Pat coffee. Bring coffee. There you go. All right, gentlemen. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, Thank you. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 7.42 p.m. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Roll call vote. Eric? Yes, sir. Tony? Yes. Don? Yes. Myself, yes. And we are adjourned.
Mr. Holloway. Thank you. Thank you.